See, it even happens to me. I was muted. We're going to get started uh, now. And today we're actually shifting a little bit. We're going to start to do deal with much more complicated surfaces. So once more, we're back into Rhino. We did our, our section, our little break where we went into V-Ray. Um, I apologize. I realized last night late when I got an email from one of my students in my other class that I forgot to post the lecture from last Wednesday. So I apologize for that. I will post it today. I have to finish processing it because I just completely forgot about it and got busy. Uh, so you'll have two that'll end up being posted today. I'll post 210 and then I'll post 211. So I apologize for that. Um, but if you were missing a piece, you're, you, um, you can go back and watch it or you can always watch one of the previous semesters. Um, so I apologize for that, but I will get it done today. I have uh, up on the screen right now, I have exercise 211. We're going to be working today with terrain that we get from SketchUp. So we're going to do a tiny bit of SketchUp. I'm going to pull the terrain from SketchUp and then we'll drop it into Rhino. Uh, truth be told, if we were working on a real site, we would have some kind of a topographic survey that was done by an engineer. That civil engineer would then give us the, the topography and we'd model it up in uh, Rhino. But since we don't have that, we're going to work from some giant pieces of terrain from SketchUp. The concepts are very much the same. And so I want to be able to walk through the, uh, the concepts. And so we're going to use that as our uh, terrain generation engine. So we'll be working with SketchUp just a little bit. Then we'll work in Rhino to convert a polygon surface into a nice NURBS surface. I'll talk about how it smooths out and whatever. Uh, and then ultimately, we'll, we'll create a little um, set of topo lines that we'll export. And that's what you'll post for today. Um, this is very much a skill builder exercise, and then we will take the skills today and we'll apply them on Wednesday, and then we'll apply them again on Monday. So this is really a three-parter, uh, though we'll start back at the beginning each time in my lecture. I'll go through it a little bit faster, um, but this is one of those skills. It will build into your assignment one, 202, and it's it's just one of those things that if you can master, it makes your life so much easier in design studios going forward. So it's really, it's a great skill set. I spend a lot of time working on it uh, and I'll show you kind of where we're going. Today's just the beginning though. So let's go ahead and open up Rhino. I already have Rhino open here and we're not dealing with materials today, but I did go ahead and download those materials. So Rhino is, is set and good to go. The next piece, though, to get started is that I need SketchUp. So I'm going to go to the Start menu down here, and I'll scroll down to SketchUp. Now, I already tried opening this earlier today, and when I clicked on it, it opened and asked me something about a license. And I just said, OK, and I clicked it. Then it threw an error saying it couldn't validate the license or something. And so I closed it. And then I went back and opened it, and lo and behold, now it opens. So I'm not sure if you'll have the same problem as me, but if you do, try closing it and opening it again uh, and seeing if you can make it work. If not, you can tell me during our check-in times today that it's not working, and I'll see what I can do to get the IT people uh, to fix it. Angie's asking, I just saw it in chat, is the assignment due tonight or tomorrow? Uh, part two says Monday, 3-7. You know what? I'll tell you what. Let's have it due on Wednesday by midnight. I'll edit that. Let's have it due by Wednesday. And that gives both check-in groups the opportunity to check in with me this week uh, about their assignment. So uh, Angie, hopefully that answers your question. I will edit the assignment so that it's due on Wednesday the 9th at midnight. And that gives you all a chance to talk to me. Okay. So just thank you for, for adding that message in the chat. Okay, so I'm back here into SketchUp. I'm gonna choose the architectural inches template. And this is important. I wanna be in the inches because my Rhino units are gonna be in inches when I bring this in. So I wanna make sure I'm in inches. And it should open up SketchUp. Perfect. Now we can get rid of the person. So I'm just gonna click on her and press the delete key on the keyboard, I hope which of course isn't working for me. Let me right click and say erase. My guess is that it, it's a Mac Windows thing that's causing that issue. And so in SketchUp here, I'm gonna go ahead, I'll zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna go up to the um, file menu and I'm gonna go to geolocation. So it's file, geolocation, and I'm gonna click on this add location button. 
please sign in to use this feature. How convenient is that? All right, so it looks like we have to have a Trimble ID. I don't know whether I do or not. Let me sign in with Google and see what happens here. Accept the cookies. Sign in with Google. All right, I'm gonna have to copy and paste my uh, sign in here, so bear with me. So uh, for SketchUp, I've been using like the online free thing for my other classes. Uh, do you recommend just downloading the Pro? Well, so you can use the Pro through the remote desktop. Uh, for this particular uh, feature, we have to use the Pro version because it's not available in the free version. Oh, okay. I, for some reason, I completely forgot about the remote desktop. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. It's no problem. Hold on. I am sorry. I have to, you know, this is why doing this live, you, you see the problems that we all run into. So uh, let me see here. Let's see. Sorry, I got to find it. Okay, we're going to use. And hopefully this will work. All right, let's paste that in. I got to love this, right? All this two factor stuff. Yes. Yes, it's me. My code is 57. It's so ridiculous. Okay. Perfect. So it says that I'm all signed in and I'm getting plenty of alerts. And now I'm at the ad location. If you run into this and you can't seem to make it work, I would like to point out for you that, let's, let me close this for just a second, that on the exercise 211 page here, um, there is a Hawaii example terrain that you can download. And so this, let me right click on it, save link as, uh, we could put it in our OneDrive folder for today. And I know I already have this, but I'm just doing it so that you can see it. Uh, so this is the Hawaii sample terrain. We can choose to save it. Remember that I have to choose to keep it. I'll click that little upward arrow and choose keep, and that'll let me actually download it. So that's something I prep for you in case you run into SketchUp problems. But hopefully you can just do it in SketchUp because it's really nice to learn how to get your own content from SketchUp. So all of that being said, I'm now logged in. Let's go back to SketchUp. I'll go to File, Geolocation, Add Location. And there we go. And so this geolocation add location, I can actually search for a particular location. So that, that example was in Hawaii, but I could also do say Lake Tahoe or Yosemite. All right. And so if I look up, that is definitely not Lake Tahoe. <laughs> Let's try Lake Tahoe, California. You gotta love this. I think I would be faster if I <laughs> were down by San Diego. I would be faster if I just did it by zooming in. All right, so let's get up here. And you see that when the, as I zoom in, there's the point at which these, um, these little squares start to appear. That square is the maximum amount of terrain that I can actually grab in one of these uh, examples. So I would, have to, I would have to zoom in to the point where I can see that square, and then I could actually download this particular piece of terrain. As I zoom in a little bit smaller, you see that the, the, the overall size gets a little bit bigger. And then I can go ahead and grab that. I do that by clicking this select region, uh, select provider. Sure, digital globe. And then I can drag this little box to decide how much I want. Again, the maximum I can take is that, that square right there. And then we'll go ahead and click on import. And it comes in. And so we can actually see here, there's that photograph that I just had. If I go to my file menu 
and I go to geolocation and I go to show terrain like that, we can actually see that terrain as it's been downloaded. So that's good. So let's go ahead and save this. Now I'll go to file and then I'm going to go to save as. And I want to save this on my flash drive. So let's go to my, or excuse me, I'm so used to saying flash drive. It's actually on my OneDrive. Let's go to live demonstrations. And let's go into my topography file here. And we'll call this uh, Sierra 3. Oh, hello. Sierra 3. Now, under this save, this is the most current version of SketchUp. I've found sometimes we need to back save a little bit in our SketchUp file. And by doing the back save, I might go to SketchUp 2018. Hold on for one second. Sorry about that. I have dogs in with me and they're not being very cooperative right now. Um, so I'm gonna back save into maybe the 2018 version. And that way I can for sure download uh, and use it in Rhino. So I'll go ahead and click on save. And that'll save a sketchup.skp. Okay, so I have that sketchup.skp. And now with that SKP, I can bring that into Rhino. So that was all I really needed to do in SketchUp. So let's minimize SketchUp. Let's come back over here into Rhino. I have a Rhino open, but I need to make sure that it's in inches. So I'm gonna right click down here where it says millimeters, go to unit settings, and I'm going to select right here, inches. And that way my default units are in inches. I have to make sure they agree. The SketchUp files in inches, and now the um, Rhino file is also in inches. Okay, so I can go ahead and go to file and then go to import. So I'm gonna to go to a file and then import, and I can go get that SketchUp file that I just saved. So let's go to my live demonstrations and we'll go into today's class. And it was Sierra 3. We'll go ahead and click on open. And we're going to bring this in as the mesh and the rest of these default options are just fine. We'll go ahead and say, okay. And if we were to zoom out, so let me type Z, enter, and then S for selected, enter. We can see that piece of terrain that just came out of SketchUp. So let me go ahead and go to shaded mode so that we can see it. And there's that nice little piece of terrain. Now it comes in with a couple extra pieces. So as we look at this piece of terrain, let me make the perspective view big. If we look at our layers here, we have a layer that includes everything. And then we have a sub layer called layer zero. Everything's on that layer. I like to kind of clean up the layers. So I'm gonna click on a brand new layer. We'll call this SketchUp. And on that SketchUp layer, I'm gonna move this mesh. So I'll select it and I'll right click on the SketchUp layer and say change object layer. There it is. Let's move that all the way outside of all the rest of the layers. Let's come down here to the very bottom. I'll move this one. Ah, it's not liking me today. All right, let's just use these arrows to move it. There you go. And once that's done, I can turn off the SketchUp and I can delete everything else. So let's go ahead and delete this. Let's delete these layers. And now I have the SketchUp layer and I have a default layer. So what this is right now is it's what's called a triangulated mesh, which means this surface is actually made up of a bunch of little triangles. So if we look closely at say this edge right here, you can see that it's not really smooth. Right? It's kind of jagged because it's made up of all these little triangles. We want to work to convert this. There you go. Now you can kind of see it a little bit better. See how it's kind of a little peak and then it goes to a flat valley and then it goes to a peak again and another flat valley. We want to kind of clean that up so that it becomes a nice smooth surface. And so we're going to do that using a command called the contour command. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer here. 
And I'm going to con call this contour X. So it's contour X. And I'm going to make that layer active. So I'm going to change the check mark so that it's next to the contour X. And to make it easier for you to see it, I'm also going to change the color to red. The color changing part is totally optional. But with that color change set, oops, all right, didn't actually set to red because I didn't say OK. There we go. Now it's set to red. I'm going to take this surface and I'm going to contour it going from this point going to that point. Hold on, there was a bunch of. Uh, okay, sorry, I missed you guys. You were asking about the provider for the SketchUp. Uh, I chose Digital Globe. It doesn't matter which one you pick. We're actually not using the photograph anyway right now. So I'm going to go up to Curve, Curve from Objects, and I'm going to choose Contour. So Curve, Curve from Objects, Contour. And right now I can't actually snap to this because it's a mesh. So I need to turn on, like if I turned on the endpoint, it still wouldn't snap to it. So I need to turn on over here the point called vertex. That will let me snap to this because it's a mesh, not a NURBS surface. So there it is. I'm going to click on this point right here. And I want to create a line. Let me turn on ortho to make this easy that's not snapping to anything that's right along the X axis. So we'll go right along that axis and I'll click. So that is the direction perpendicular to the contour planes. Now I need to specify the distance between contours. So we'll say maybe 100 feet. So I'll type 100 followed by the apostrophe. Now, a mistake people often make is that they do this interval too small. And when they do it, it either crashes Rhino or you have too dense of a mesh. What I'm looking for is to have these approximately the same width as the triangles. So we're pretty close there. And I have my first set of contours. If I looked at those contours in the top view, they would all be perfectly straight up and down. Now I'm going to repeat the process again on a new layer called Contour Y. So let me create a new layer and we'll call this Contour Y. And really the X and Y don't matter. I use those as determining factors just to remind you of the direction that they're supposed to go. And this Contour Y needs to go in the opposite direction. Now, when I do this, let's make it the active layer. I wanna start by deselecting everything. I'll go up to Curve. Curve from objects, contour, or I could type in contour. I'll pick this corner right there. Oh, it says select objects to contour. I need to select the surface. I'll press enter. And then I'll pick that vertex right there. And I'll go off along my Y axis this time. And I'll click. My distance between the contours should again be 100 feet. I'll hit enter and it will then contour in the Y direction. So this means that I have two sets of contours that when looked at, let me turn off my SketchUp altogether, look like a grid in the top view. And in the perspective view, they kind of look like the surface, but it's not a filled in surface just yet. So that gets me those contours. Now, one of the mistakes that people sometimes make, and I'm going to do, let's see, let me do a new layer. We'll call it contour M for mistake. Let's make that active. I'm going to turn off my contour Y. Is they contour either both the surface and all of the previous contours, or they contour all the previous lines. So you have these selected and you go up and create the contour. So I'll go to curve, curve from objects, contour. And I'll set this up the same way. So my vertex point is down here. I'm going off along the Y axis and I press enter for 100 feet and I get this, which is a whole series of points. So when you contour a surface, you get a line. When you contour a line, you get a point. 
So these points are very much not useful to me. So the mistake here is that I was contouring the lines rather than the surface itself. So you always want to make sure that you deselect everything before you start the contour and that you contour the surface, not the lines. So let me go ahead and turn off my SketchUp. I'm going to leave on my contour X and my contour Y. So this looks very much like what we did in exercise 209 for a curved network or a network surface. But if you remember correctly, we had to have trimmed edges. We couldn't have ragged edges. We had to trim up those edges in order to do the, the curved network. So let's look at this in the top view right there. And let's go ahead and trim it. So I want to make sure that I'm getting everything. Looks like I could use this as a trim. So let me go ahead and select that and type trim. And I can get rid of those pieces. And I can go all the way to right there. I'll go ahead and hit enter to finish. And then I could go ahead and delete those two lines there that don't matter. Oops, type. There's, I need to trim this off. So we'll use that as our trim. And there we go. We've gotten those trimmed. I'll hit enter to finish. And then I'll go ahead and select these and delete them. So I'm really working my way around. I'll use this as my trim line. I'll choose trim. And that one's an easy one. We can do them all in one shot. We need to delete those lines. And the last one here. Yeah, I have to zoom way in to do it. And why is that hanging off? I didn't trim it. There we go. All right, so the last one is that line and we'll trim. So this side it always takes a little bit more work because of the direction of the mouse. But at some point it gets easy and we can do pretty much everything. There we go. I'll hit enter to finish. And then I'll select that line and delete it as well. So what I've done is I've trimmed off all of the extras around this surface so that I can perform a curved network and I have a straight and solid border. If we look at this in perspective view, you can see that I do have a border that goes all the way around this shape. So at this point, before we move on, we want to make sure that we save our work because sometimes this does crash. So I'll go to File and then Save. And I'm going to save this on my OneDrive. There it is. And we'll call this Sierra 3, since that's the name that I came up with earlier. And I'll click Save. So by saving it now, I preserve it just in case Rhino decides to crash. Looks like it's taking a second to save anyway. So we'll let it finish. Yeah, maybe it's taking longer than I thought. <laughs> the save shouldn't be the problem. It's the curve network. So bear with me. Well, this is really annoying, so I apologize. I'm, I'm going to wait for a couple minutes and see if it comes back, because I really don't want to have to redo this part. OK. 
Come on. There we go. Okay. So we've got that. It's saved. So at this point, we want to go ahead and create the curve network out of this. So I'll select all of the lines. And then we'll come up to our surface. And it's curve network. If we want to type it into the command line, it's going to be network SRF is the command. And we'll go ahead and click on it. Now it says calculating a surface from more than 100 curves can be slow and may cause Rhino to be um, stable. So if it becomes unstable, this is iffy. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, but sometimes this one has trouble. Rudy, I feel your pain that it never comes back. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And I apologize for that. So <laughs> you got to do that time, sir. <laughs> did it come back? Yeah, yeah, it did. Oh, good, good. Um, so this process is also a very slow process. And I apologize that it's slow. If it's not working fast enough for you, you can do it with half the lines. And this is why I chose to save it, just in case I have to, to uh, kill off this operation and start uh, again. But this can take a couple minutes to show up. There we go. When you get the preview here, don't adjust anything. Just go ahead and say, OK. And this by itself, once it, once it does this process, it's going to make Rhino really, really slow until we rebuild the surface. So it's gone ahead, it's done it. I'm gonna make a single click outside so that nothing's selected. Well, maybe not, maybe it hasn't finished yet. We'll let it wait. All right, bear with me. Give it a little bit more time. All right, we, we moved a step forward. We're creating message, message, meshes. Can't talk today. There, maybe not. Oh, how nice. I actually don't think I've ever had it fully crash like, oh, maybe not. Maybe it's still here. No, nope. full crash. I don't know that I've ever had it fully crash. Again, that's why I saved the work. So let's open Rhino back up. And we'll do it with fewer curves. All right, let's close these out. OK, so this time, when I go to select the curves with the curve network, I'm going to select all the contour x's. So we'll select objects. That'll be all of those. And I'm only going to select this curve and this curve out of the y's. So it's just the two end curves. It should get us a very similar result. So at this point, we'll go ahead and go to uh, my surface and then curve network. And we'll let this process here. 
So Naomi, I feel you. This is exactly why I do these live because I want you to see that I'm human too and that these kinds of things do happen. So it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to get a chuckle out of it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and say okay. It's actually interesting. I think uh, the older version of Rhino, Rhino 6, was actually better at doing this and it took less time. Okay, I think it might have finished. So I will make a single click outside to deselect everything. And then I'm going to click on this big black object. Now it's important to recognize that the reason it's black is because it's just so dense right now. So before I move on, before I try to work with it, I'm gonna immediately go to a rebuild command. So I'll type in rebuild, or I'll go up to edit and then choose rebuild. And I'm going to rebuild this surface and it's suggesting uh, 10 by 10, that's, that's way too simple. So let's go maybe 300 by 300. And I'll go ahead and say, okay. And so that rebuild, you can see that there's all, all of my uh, little surface points there, is, is just kind of a preliminary one. So let's turn off the contour X and contour Y, and actually I should rename this to terrain. There we go. And if we look at this terrain, you can see that we can still kind of see the little squares. You can still see where those triangles were of the previous. So it's not a fully smooth terrain just yet. So we can continue to rebuild this to smooth it out. The difference here is that we lose some of our um, definition when we do this. So I'm gonna show you the difference. This is not something that you have to do. I just wanna show you the difference. I'm gonna right click on the terrain layer and I'm gonna duplicate it. And so this is terrain copy one. And so what I'll do so that you can see this is I'll change the color of this one to be maybe, uh, let's go dark green. And I'll say, okay. And so on this terrain copy, Nope, it didn't copy the object. Let me copy this over. So I'm going to go to edit, uh, excuse me, transform, copy, and then I'll choose in place. So it makes a copy directly over. Then I'll right click on the terrain copy and I'll say change object layer. And I'll turn off the original terrain. So here's my copy. I will rebuild this. And I'm going to go uh, on the other example. Uh, let's go to maybe 100 by 100. And I'll go ahead and say, OK. And so the density of the surface becomes far less. And we can see, if we turn on the original, the differences between the two surfaces as it starts to smooth out. So we're losing some of the detail in here. But as a result, we're getting a smoother overall surface. And so generally, if you look at ridges, those are the easiest places to kind of see where the smoothing is happening. So right there, that ridge is much, much smoother than it was originally in this shape. So let's change so you can see it. Same ridge. You can see how you can still see those, those squares or those triangles right there. So we're trying to make sure that we've smoothed it out. So that was at 100 by 100. If I went further, all right, I could take this. Let's create another new layer. Terrain copy two. I'm going to change the color on this one. Let's go to a purple here. There we go. I'm going to change it. Let's go transform, copy, 
in place. And then I'll right click and say change object layer. There it is. And we'll make this active, turn this one off and I'm gonna rebuild this one. So let's type rebuild. And instead of 100 by 100, let's go like 30 by 30. And again, I'm picking you know rather extreme examples here, but I want you to see how this changes. So when I go 30 by 30, my, my density of my surface goes way down and the amount that's different than the original is pretty substantial. So it's really smoothed out a lot of these places. And as a result, I have a very, very smooth surface, but I've lost a lot of detail in the terrain. So you have to decide at what level is the smoothing enough or you know, basically how far do you wanna go with this smoothing? So I generally think that the one that's about 100 by 100 uh, is about right. I think it's a, it's a good compromise in our smoothing. So there's my piece of terrain. I've been able to successfully convert it over into uh, a NURBS object, a nice smooth surface. And so from here, I want to actually slice this up as if I were taking like a topographic map of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a new layer and we'll call this topo lines. I'll make it active and I'm going to use the contour command again. So I'll go up to curve, curve from objects, contour. It's gonna ask me to select the object for the contour. It's this new surface that I just created. I'll hit enter. And this time my base point, I'll snap right there, is not going out to the right. It's not going out to the left along the X or Y axis. We want this one to be going up in the Z axis. So it's easiest actually to do it in either the front or the right side view. And we just wanna make sure that we're going straight up and down. And there it is. The distance between the contours, a typical contour map is at 40 feet. So we'll go ahead and type 40, followed by the apostrophe for 40 feet. And I'll hit enter. And you can actually watch it build the contour map of that piece of terrain. So that would be like looking at a topo of this particular site. There it is. So we're gonna take this a couple steps further. And actually, despite all of the computer crashes, we're running way well ahead of schedule today. But I have my topo lines. I'd like to make them flat, like as if they were an actual mat. So I'll go ahead and create a surface. Let's do a new layer. And we'll call it flat topo. Make that active. I'm gonna create a surface and I'll do that using the surface corner to corner, excuse me, rectangular plane corner to corner. And I want that to be larger than my whole piece of terrain like that. Then I can actually switch into my top view and I can do a projection. So I can type project, select surfaces and poly surfaces to project onto. We'll use that surface there. I'll hit enter and it will create a flat topo map of my terrain. Let's go ahead and move those over so you can see them side by side. Let me delete this plane. And so now what you have is you have, if I were to make these, you have the 3D view where the topos are, are going up along the, the hills. And then you have the flat view right here as if they were like on a map. So our goal today in our exercise is to be able to create these topo lines. Once you've gotten to the point where you have these, I want you to just do a screen capture. That's what you're gonna be turning in. So I'll go up to the little down triangle. I'll go to my, um, Oh, sometimes capture to file. We want to save this. I'll go ahead and say, okay. And we'll put it into today's folder. We can leave it like that. That capture is what you're going to turn in as your uh, exercise 211 for today. Okay. So 
It took me a little bit less time to go through it. I built in some time for some computer crashes. That's to be expected. Um, and as you guys saw, it does, does even happen to me. So make sure you save frequently and often. Uh, if you are struggling and it's crashing on doing all of the lines at once, select half the lines. So we're back up here to our contour X and Y. Let me turn the rest of this stuff off. Remember that you can do this by right-clicking on the layer and saying select objects. That'll select all of those. Hold down shift and select that and that. And then you can do the network surface from just those lines, okay? The other place that people make mistakes is sometimes when they do the contours, they're not a perfect grid, they're on angles. That usually means that you weren't uh, exactly on the X and Y axis. So you need to be seeing this in the top view and always have it be a perfect X, Y grid. And then you'll ultimately turn in those topo lines for me. Like I said, this is a builder exercise. It's meant for you to go through and kind of work through the kinks. We'll start again on Wednesday, but we're gonna be far more technical. And the Wednesday um, and the following Monday, so the 9th and I don't know what the date is next Monday, uh, I guess it would be the 14th. Those two, are, are building on what you're creating for your assignment 202. And I'm really walking you through the steps for that. So this is a precursor, getting you ready for it. And then we'll really get through all of the steps going forward, okay? So like I said, I finished a little bit early today. Good for you, I guess. Um, my first check-in group comes back at 1210. So I'll see my first check-in group at 1210. I, like I said, I'm extending the deadline for your assignment 201s till Wednesday at midnight. I will make that change right now. This, I would suggest that during our check-ins today, if you want to show me your assignments and get some feedback, that would be a great uh, strategy at that point. So that's it for lecture. Uh, if you have any specific questions, you're welcome to stick around or, or catch me during one of the check-ins today.